Beneath the rugged mountains of Yellowstone National Park, a dormant giant slumbers, concealing a formidable threat. While the surface showcases breathtaking beauty, there exists an underlying danger that demands attention. The Yellowstone volcano, with its vast expanse and majestic landscapes, harbors the potential for a catastrophic eruption at any given moment. So when, how, and what should we do? Let's take a deep dive into this matter. One of the most significant volcanoes on the planet is slumbering beneath Yellowstone National Park, a vast expanse of breathtaking wildness that is explored by over 3 million people on a yearly basis. According to the National History Museum in London, a supervolcano is a volcano that has the potential to produce an eruption of magnitude 8 on the volcanic explosivity index, discharging more than 1,000 cubic kilometers of material. The Yellowstone caldera, which is the basin that resembles a cauldron and is located at the summit of the volcano, is so enormous that it is commonly referred to as a supervolcano. To put that into perspective, the eruption of Pinatubo in the Philippines in 1991, which is arguably the most powerful volcanic eruption in living memory, was given a rating of 6 on the Volcanic Explosivity Index. This means that according to the Natural History Museum, it was around 100 times smaller than the benchmark for a supervolcano. Is Yellowstone due for an eruption right about now? There have been numerous claims made by the media that Yellowstone is on the verge of erupting. They assert that the impending explosion of the supervolcano is inevitable due to the fact that its last recent eruption occurred 70,000 years ago. But that's not how volcanoes usually behave at all. This is possibly the most widespread misconception about Yellowstone and about volcanoes in general, the author writes. Michael Poland, a geophysicist and the scientist in charge of Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, told Live Science in an email that volcanoes do not operate according to predetermined timetables. They erupt when there is enough eruptible magma beneath the surface and pressure to cause that magma to ascend, says one expert. They erupt when there is pressure to cause that magma to ascend. Neither condition is in place at Yellowstone right now, he added later on. It all comes down to the availability of the magma. If you cut off that supply, the volcano won't explode. According to Poland, many different types of volcanoes go through cycles of activity and inactivity. Most of the time, the activity of a volcano is a direct result of the supply of magma that it has available. Kilauea in Hawaii and Stromboli in Italy are two examples of volcanoes where the supply of magma is very stable, according to Poland. Some volcanoes do appear to have regular eruptions, he said. The concept that Yellowstone is overdue for an eruption has been around for a while, but where did it originate? The previous super eruption at Yellowstone Volcano, which took place 631,000 years ago, did not take the form of a single massive explosion. Instead, the findings of recent study point to the possibility that it was a series of eruptions or several vents that rapidly emitted volcanic debris. According to the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory 2022 annual report that was published on May 4 by the U.S. Geological Survey, fieldwork that took place over the last year has produced fresh geological evidence indicating the formation of Yellowstone caldera was much more complex than previously thought. After an eruption of a volcano, a massive crater known as a caldera might occur as a result of the collapse of the mountain. Yellowstone National Park is home to one of the most extensive volcanic systems on the planet. It is located above what are known as hot spots on Earth, which are regions in the mantle from which hot plumes rise to produce volcanoes on the crust above. In the past three million years, it has been the source of three eruptions that formed calderas. The Huckleberry Ridge Tuff eruption took place 2.1 million years ago. The Mesa Falls eruption took place 1.3 million years ago and the Lava Creek eruption took place 631,000 years ago. What are some examples of super eruptions? Both the Huckleberry Ridge Tuff and Lava Creek episodes are regarded to be super eruptions due to the volume of material that they ejected, which was greater than 240 cubic miles. The latter event was to blame for the development of the Yellowstone caldera. Even though it was nearly 10 times larger than the eruption of Mount St. Helens in 1980, Mesa Falls is not regarded to be a super eruption because it only produced 67 cubic meters of material during its eruption. The previous study has demonstrated that the Lava Creek super eruption was not a complete surprise. 
Deposits found in the Sour Creek Dome region, which is located east of the National Park, suggest that the massive explosion was preceded by at least another eruption. Igonimbrite, which is a type of volcanic rock that is formed by deposits of the hot mixture of material that is expelled during an eruption, was discovered at the site and had completely cooled before the primary mapped eruption of Lava Creek took place. 2022 was spent by scientists remapping and collecting samples from Sour Creek Dome in order to gain a better understanding of the eruption's timing. It had always been known that there were at least two geological units, a volume of rock that is distinct from those surrounding it, from the eruption, and it was thought that there was little to no time gap between them. Michael Poland, the scientist in charge at the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, said in an email to Live Science. It had always been known that there were at least two geological units. At this time, we believe that there are other units, and we just do not know how much time may have passed between the two events, if any at all. At Sour Creek, the team has discovered four ignimbrite units that were not previously recognized, which suggests that there have been at least four eruptive pulses. They also discovered two structures that had the appearance of eruptive vents, which suggests that these rocks may have originated from these vents. That could mean either several vents were active or there was time separation between the eruptions, said Poland. It could also mean both of those things. However, we do not yet have access to the necessary data in order to provide answers to those questions. In 2020, researchers discovered that the Huckleberry Ridge Tuff eruption, which had ejected more than twice as much volcanic material as Lava Creek had, was likewise a phased event. Lava Creek's eruption had ejected more than twice as much. According to an examination of the rocks at the location, there appear to have been three distinct eruptions, with a period of time ranging from weeks to months between the first two, and from years to decades between the second and third. It is not anticipated that the Yellowstone volcano will erupt anytime soon. On the other hand, the discovery that the Lava Creek eruption may have followed a pattern that was comparable to that of the Huckleberry Ridge Tuff eruption may provide some insight into what to anticipate if and when Yellowstone does blow. According to Poland, these major caldera-forming eruptions at Yellowstone might not be single events, but instead have multiple phases. Now that new units have been discovered, scientists working at the volcano intend to conduct in-depth studies of those units, as well as the boundaries that separate them. They will be able to build a more accurate image of what the eruption at Lava Creek looked like, and possibly even what caused it as a result of this new information. The new finding was made by researchers, and it was published on June 1 in the journal Geology. The researchers achieved the discovery by analyzing a large tract of volcanic rock that was spewed up by the Yellowstone hotspot across extensive regions of the western U.S. The authors of the study claim that the recent discovery completely rewrites the ancient history of the hotspot. Thomas Knott, a volcanologist at the University of Leicester in England and the study's principal author, said in a statement that it appears the Yellowstone hotspot has had a threefold drop in its capacity to produce super-eruption events. It seems that the Yellowstone hotspot has experienced a threefold decrease in its capacity to produce super-eruption events, Not said. This is a very significant drop, the author says. The giant that has been asleep. The Yellowstone hotspot is a strange blob of hot rock in the Earth's mantle that is now sitting under a stretch of Yellowstone National Park that is around 1,530 square miles in total area. It wasn't always there, but the massive heat source that powers the park's most famous attractions, such as Old Faithful Geyser, is what makes Yellowstone National Park what it is today. During the past 17 million years, the constantly shifting tectonic plates of the Earth have moved various areas of what are now the states of Idaho, Nevada, Montana, Oregon, and Wyoming over the hotspot, leaving a path of ancient volcanic devastation behind it. This can be compared to a large sauce pot sliding over an oven burner. The term supereruption refers to the most catastrophic and extensive of these types of eruptions. On the Volcanic Explosivity Index, which determines a volcano's relative explosivity based on the height of its ash column and the volume of its remaining lava, these earth-shaking explosions score an 8 or higher. The VEI quantifies the explosive potential of a volcano. On the VEI, the eruption of Mount St. Helens in 1980 had a score of 5. Because the VEI scale is logarithmic, 
a level 8 super eruption is approximately 1,000 times more explosive than the previous eruption. The most recent Yellowstone super eruption took place 630,000 years ago and was responsible for the formation of much of the park's contemporary topography. Another Yellowstone super eruption took place 2.1 million years ago underneath the park. Before this point, the history of the eruption is more obscure. In the past 12 million years, researchers have documented at least four other super eruptions. However, one study from 2016 indicated that at least a dozen super eruptions have happened since then. It can be challenging to locate evidence of particular eruptions due to the fact that huge volcanic deposits have a tendency to overlap and can appear extremely similar to one another. In the recently published research, the scientists aimed to find a solution to that issue by carrying out the most comprehensive investigation of North America's old volcanic rock tracts that has ever been carried out. The researchers used a multidisciplinary approach to associate widely dispersed volcanic deposits in Idaho and Nevada with seven criteria. These characteristics included the color of the rock, the rock's age, its chemical composition, and the polarity of magnetic minerals found within the rocks. The team's findings were published in the journal Science. It turns out that a scattering of volcanic deposits that were previously thought to be the consequence of a string of relatively minor eruptions were actually the product of two extremely large ones. According to the findings of the researchers, the oldest super eruption, which is known as the McMullen Creek super eruption, took place approximately 9 million years ago across a 4,600 square mile span of what is now southern Idaho. The second super eruption, which took place 8.72 million years ago and was known as the Gray's Landing super eruption, was described as being colossal by the team that conducted the study. This eruption was the single greatest eruption of the Yellowstone hotspot that has ever been identified, covering approximately 8,900 square miles of what is now southern Idaho and northern Nevada. Knott claims that the super eruption that occurred at Gray's Landing ranks among the top five eruptions that have ever occurred. It enameled a region the size of New Jersey in searing hot volcanic glass, which sterilized the land surface immediately after being spread across it. The stratosphere would have become clogged with particles, resulting in the precipitation of fine ash across the entirety of the U.S. and eventually the entire world. This epic eruption seems to have been almost 30% larger than the next biggest eruption that this hotspot had seen, which took place 2 million years ago. There have been a total of six super eruptions that have been documented as having taken place throughout the Miocene epoch, which lasted from 23 million to 5.3 million years ago. According to what the researchers wrote, these eruptions took place on average once per 500,000 years. To put this in perspective, there has been a gap of 1.5 million years between the two super eruptions that have happened since then. The fact that there have been fewer extremely large eruptions does not absolve us to responsibility. It is possible that another super eruption could take place at any time. However, according to Knott, it is more likely that it will not take place until hundreds of thousands of years. The only way for scientists to have any idea when it is going to happen is if they watch the seismic activity around the park very carefully. That's all for the video today. We will be right back with more. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching.